Welcome back guys, this is Automotive Anonymous and that's a 2023 Subaru Outback Onyx XT. Little did this turbo Outback know when it was driven off the Lafayette, Indiana assembly line a few weeks ago, that it would get some upgrades such as the Thule rack, the lowering springs, the wheels, the tires, and the tint to make this basically the enthusiast lower turbo wagon model that a lot of us want, a lot of us desire. Well, you can buy one here. So we're gonna review it today. We're gonna do a walk around, go through the specs, initial driving impressions, zero to 60 with the GPS, and then final thoughts to decide, is it worth your time and money, or is it just something to marvel at, but you should leave it at the lot and consider the competition. Big thanks to the Twin Falls Subaru for letting me borrow it for the day. Otherwise, we're gonna dive right in. A little bit about the Outback platform in general. Subaru calls this cosmic blue. I call it blue. It looks really good. It's still the same Outback platform that starts at 28,000 for base model, although an Onyx XT like this with the options it has is closer to 38,000 and then probably just a couple thousand dollars extra for these tasteful modifications that it has. Subaru sells about 100,000 of these or more every single year in the United States. It's now the fourth year of the sixth generation of the Outback that started in 2019. It has a 2.4 liter turbo. I'll show you under the hood in just a few minutes. And that's a pretty darn cool vehicle. I own one myself. I have an Outback Wilderness and I've had it for over a year and a half. It's been a phenomenal vehicle to have, to drive, to own. And I'm excited to show you this one. If you weren't gonna lower your Outback, a base one is roughly 16 feet long, five and a half feet tall, six feet wide. It does a full circle and 36 feet and the standard global Subaru platform with all wheel drive and a 370 final drive ratio gives it 8.7 inches of ground clearance. But this one is in the four to five inch ballpark. So it definitely feels pretty low to drive, but it still is adequately placed in how it does. It only has a nine foot wheelbase, so it's very stable on the road, especially at about 3,900 pounds. If you have a tow package on this and a brake trailer, you can tow about 2,700 pounds. But if you do get a wilderness model, you can tow up to 3,500 pounds because that has a slightly more aggressive final drive ratio. If you're wondering, this one has 20 inch XXR wheels with a 245, 45, 20 Ironman all season tire, which look fantastic and it's extremely well stanced. And then it has H&R lowering springs that are actually for a Subaru Legacy, which this vehicle, the Outback, is based off of. So it's lowering springs for a Legacy, which on its own has about six inches of ground clearance. That's why I suspect this one is about four to five. This vehicle is now basically just a Legacy wagon, which we used to have before the Outback completely took over, adding some ground clearance to the Legacy wagon. The gas tank's located there on the passenger side when the doors are unlocked, so is the tank, but when you lock them, that stays locked to keep it safe. It's an 18 and a half gallon tank. The base Onyx XT is rated for 23 city, 30 highway. So with an 18 and a half gallon tank, you're gonna be road tripping for up to 540 miles between Phillips if you want. Now that we're almost in the year 2024, there are nine trim levels of the Outback. So if you really want to modify, lift or lower any of them, you're welcome to. And because it's still the same generation, there's a lot of aftermarket goodies you can have. But if you just want the regular Onyx and you don't want this one, you should know that Onyx basically means blacked out badging and blacked out wheels on the factory one. XT means it's a turboed model versus a non-turboed model. And then you should know that if you want the base Onyx XT, you're gonna get StarTech seats, black 18 inch wheels with all season tires that also are really good. So you can option for the Harman Kardon speaker system and then you get the hands-free power lift gate, which I use quite a bit on my wilderness and I like it quite a bit. We're getting close to the model years 2024 hitting the dealership, but just know that now that the Outback's been out for four or five years in this generation, there's a lot of goodies for it. So whether you want to lower it like this or you want to lift it, there's multiple brands, multiple offerings you can choose. But if you just want a base Onyx XT, you should know that Onyx basically means blacked out badging and it would factory come with 18 inch blacked out wheels. And then XT means it's the turboed model versus a non XT, which would be the non turboed model. So if you're just going to go with the base Onyx XT, the way this started out life, it used to have 18 inch wheels that were black with a little bit more sidewall. It had 8.7 inches of ground clearance. And then it has a power lift gate that's hands-free, very convenient. LED projector headlights on all models, meaning it's a top safety pick plus between that and all the other safety features that this one offers. And then you can even get Harman Kardon speakers on your Onyx XT if you pay for that package. But that's probably enough of the exterior for now. Let's hop inside, see what else has to offer. Proximity key features, so you can pay for the My Subaru app and have remote start from anywhere in the world. You can lock and unlock the vehicle. The door panel looks basic Onyx door panel. You have the green stitching from their deal with Hobby Lobby. Looks really good. There's a few different trim pieces, a few different colors that they've coordinated in here. Non Harman Kardon speakers on this one, bottle holder, small size door pocket, but really nice handle, nice soft touch, comfortable armrest. 
very small Subaru on the door sill. A little bit of lining if you have to step there. Onyx mats with more green stitching, rubberized pedals, fuse box, and your lighting options. More green stitching, lighting stock right there. And then power seats with that StarTex. They're comfortable, they're fairly well bolstered, so they're convenient for a lot of people. Then you have a power moonroof up top. Sitting inside the Onyx has a really nice place to be. We're gonna fire it right up with the push button start. You can see the needles do the dance. The Christmas tree lights appear very briefly. And there we go. Leather wrapped wheel feels good, turns easily with the electronic power steering. The horn sounds adequate. Everything's convenient, comfortable, very human centrically placed in here. You can go through the toggle switch to see what's on the infotainment screen in the center. Otherwise, volume controls, voice controls, paddle shifters for the eight speed fake simulated gears of the CVT, and then adaptive cruise settings on the right side. There's the 11.6 inch screen. You can go through your options. It does have Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, traction control, auto vehicle hold, display off. Some of those things are on the second page. You do have physical buttons right there to change climate controls. And then up top, you have just a window that allows a few lights to come through for some of your adaptive cruise control features. Otherwise, electronic parking brake, your plugins down here. This one doesn't have the wireless charging, but you can get that. I have it on my Outback Wilderness. It doesn't work very well, so I don't really use it very often. All the way down to manual mode if you want, or reverse to show you the guys the camera. Trajectory lines do move when you turn the wheel, but the screen is kind of small where it only takes up less than the top half. And to get into X mode, you just go all the way over here and you can get to stage one or stage two. Otherwise, piano black around the shifter, deep cup holders, and a two stage center console. What the 12 volt plug in down there? Up top, we have auto dimming mirror with the home link settings, our compass, our sunglass holder, and then our LED lighting and our controls for that power moonroof. But you know what? Let's turn off the car. Let's hop in the back and see how we sit behind yourself. The back door panel follows the same theme. You still got the green stitching, all the same type of materials. Small bottle holder and door pocket with an unnamed speaker. A little bit of grip in case you have to step all the way up to those really tall roof rails. And then you have the bench seat that's a 60-40 split. StarTex back here, of course. They drop easily. They're pretty light, so you can toss them around. All-weather mats back here, which are really convenient. I like having those on my own out back. And then sitting behind myself, I have a lot of room, but you know what, guys? You can actually recline or lift the back up a little bit, a few degrees, to gain more room, to gain more comfort. You have a double mat pocket and a place to put your pamphlets specifically, which is really nice. Cloth mats are really convenient. Heated seats, plugins, ventilation, so you're pretty well taken care of back here. You even have an armrest with a few extra cup holders. So you could stay back here for quite a while and really have a pretty good time. But let's hop around to the back, see what the hatch looks like. There's a few ways to open the hatch. There's obviously the button inside. The button underneath, in addition to the pin code, I have a video on how to set that so you can get in the car without having the key with you. Or you could just be lazy like I am today. Push the key, let the power lift gate do its thing. Back here, you have about 33 cubic feet of room. If you drop the seats, like you can easily do by pulling the handles, if they fall, the seatbelt's holding in place right there. You then have about 75, so you can easily car camp and have a good time hauling a lot of stuff back here. Otherwise, all weather mats, you have the privacy shade here, and then the cargo bag included on this one. You have clips to hold your stuff. You have a pocket behind the wheel well. You have a mesh pocket on the other side and a 12 volt. Down here, you do have a full size spare tire, your tools, and a little bit of periphery room to hide some goodies. Or are you gonna hide comment below? You can also tuck the sunshade into the grooves down here to get that out of the way if you want. Otherwise it lifts and lowers quite, quite conveniently. The other side door panel looks identical, nothing new on this side. You still have the double map pocket with the pan flip holder. You grip on the side step and your StarTech seats, that's the 60 split this time, but you can see that they lay almost flat. So you can car camp back here. You can have a good time laying heavy flat objects. But we're finally back up front and if you're gonna ride shotgun, you're back to the land of a slightly bigger door pocket. A few more controls, but not many being the passenger. You still have Subaru on the door sill, the grip on the step, Onyx floor mats, you still have powered seats up here just like the driver got which is a pretty convenient feature although i do wish the seats had onyx stamped in them or xt i think that'd be a pretty cool characteristic you have a little bit of storage right here a little bit more up here and then a locking glove box that's adequately sized and on the outback actually has a 12 volt hidden in the way right there up top on the left if you can see that it's time to come around to the front pop the hood and see what the fa20 
for DIT Turbo looks like. 260 horse, 277 pound-feet of torque is what you get out of the 2.4 liter turbo. It has an internal hood scoop and more ventilation through the grill to get through the air filter, through all the baffling piping plumbing to go through the turbo to come back around, cool down with the intercooler through the throttle body and then the upper intake manifolds. And then there you have it. There's the alternator up top, the oil dipstick, the engine oil filter, the oil fill, and this little 29 cent piece of plastic helps keep your fingers safe from getting cut off in the belt, which would be over a $29,000 medical bill I'm pretty sure, so don't do that. Otherwise, reservoir is on the passenger side. And then your battery. It's a really good setup, a really good layout. It's easy to work on. There's quite a bit of extra room under the hood. Time to drop it, take it on the road. And here's to my favorite part of the video when I finally get to take it on the road and show you guys how it drives. Initial driving impressions of the turbo wagon is that it's seriously a really cool, really unique experience. If you guys watch my channel, you know I've reviewed all eight trim levels of the Outback for 2023, but I've never reviewed a lowered wagon. And with those legacy lowering springs, it's probably about four to five inches of ground clearance. All the basics apply to the Onyx that this is. Visibility is really good. Moonroof again is restricted a little bit because of the dual rack we have up top. There's a little bit more wind noise that you can pick up from it. Not really detecting much more road noise than a normal Outback would have. Of course, now you have to be a little bit more cautious when you're doing U-turns in the dirt on off-road gravelly areas. You just don't have as much ground clearance as you did before the modifications. Are they worthwhile? Absolutely, and for just a couple thousand dollars, this is one of the best looking Outbacks I have ever seen. It's very unique, it still performs very well. Having that turbo at altitude really helps because there's a tractor up there and you guys have no idea how often I have to go around tractors and slow moving semis on narrow roads like this. And if there's oncoming traffic like that, you only have a few seconds before you have to be back in your lane if you're gonna pass them. So having a turbo is really valuable. You could of course lower your regular 2.5 liter boxer out back, but the turbo just adds more characteristic, add more punch. Of course, the speakers are just fine. You can always upgrade those for a few hundred dollars on your own, or you can get a higher trim level that has the Harman Kardons. Those are, well, a well-equipped option if you just want to stay factory, not to worry about any aftermarket or any concern there. The touchscreen for this year, you know, for 2023 and newer is better than the 2022, but I still don't love it. I wish there were physical buttons. I wish I had like an eight inch screen and a CD player personally. But overall, still an Outback, very human-centric. People love these, they're 16 feet long, almost 4,000 pounds, they're very planted on the road. They do everything quite well. You can even tow a few thousand pounds when you have a turbo model like this. Or about half of that when you have the non-turbo. Very smooth riding. The seats hold you in okay. The StarTex is awesome, I have those in my Outback Wilderness, I really like them. But getting into this lowered Outback seriously felt so weird the first time to look down at those StarTech seats, because that's not something I've seen before. And if you guys follow my channel, you know I've reviewed a lot of Subarus over the last year that I've been doing videos for fun on YouTube. But I've never reviewed a lowered StarTech seat equipped Super Outback until today. I'll do one more acceleration and then we'll teleport to our private road and see how fast it is. Zero to 60 in the lowered wagon. Traction control's off, I'll break around the CVT. True density altitude's 5,300 feet today, so even though it's turboed, it's still compressing less oxygen-rich air. So we're probably down on power eight or 9%. I'll verbalize the true zero to 60, and then I'll post a GPS graph after without the fib rollout to show you what it would have been rated. Let's go. held like it should and true zero to 60 came in at 7.1 seconds for being down on power up to almost 10 percent that's really not too bad final thoughts of the lowered onyx xt outback is that it's pretty darn cool it's pretty darn unique it really has caught a lot of attention as i've driven it around today and for good reason it looks fantastic the cosmic blue pearl and those silver 20 inch wheels really pop in contrast on this vehicle because it's an onyx it still has a lot of blacked out badging blacked out cladding and it just looks really unique 
really cool. I personally like the lifted version, the Wilderness, and that's hence why I bought that. But a lot of people do like lowering their rides. A lot of people don't need the height of a normal Outback, but they like the body style of an Outback. And this might actually be for them. H&R is a pretty good company for their lowering springs. I'm sure there's other ones available too. So it's up to you to decide. Is this the Subaru for you? Are you gonna build your own? What are you gonna do? Comment below, I really wanna know. Like this video if it was helpful or if you appreciate what I do. And subscribe if you want to watch more. I post a couple times a week typically. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Have a fantastic rest of your day.